Hi, good afternoon. We'll go ahead and call to order the regular meeting for the City of Murfreesboro Board of Zoning Appeals for January 29, 2014. Uh, first item on the agenda is a consideration of minutes for our regular meeting of December 19, 2013. And those <clears throat> minutes are included in our agenda materials. Any corrections to those minutes? If not, those minutes will stand approved as presented. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, before we take up new business, I did want to make an announcement, uh, and that is concerning application Z14002 by Ms. Sakita Duncan uh, concerning property located at 2721 Jim Houston Court. Uh, that application, as I understand, has been withdrawn, would not be considered today. Uh, all right, uh, next we'll pick up some new business here and uh, begin with some sign variant or a sign variance request. It's application S14001 by Mr. Rodney Jarvis of Jarvis Award Sign and Flag Company. Uh, he is uh, standing in for Mr. Ed Freeman of the Freeman Group, and they're requesting a variance uh, from the City of Murfreesboro sign ordinance, which prohibits a sign placed in or over a public utility or drainage easement. And this is for property located at 2079 Las Casas Pike. Mr. Hardison, I think you're going to fill in for Ms. Kerr today. Yes, sir. Afternoon, Chairman Rogers and members of the board. Um, I'm here to present the application for the store place self-storage. Uh, at this time, I will read this application to you. The applicant, Rodney Jarvis, representing Jarvis Sign Company for store place self-storage, is requesting a variance from section 25 and a quarter 24A22 of the City of Murfreesboro sign ordinance, which prohibits a foundation or sign placed in or over a public utility or drainage easement without consent of the easement holder and Board of Zoning Appeals. The sign location proposed at 2079 Las Casas Pike is within a planned unit development. The applicant is requesting permission to erect one eternally illuminated freestanding wall sign with a 60 square foot opaque background display area and an overall height of 16 feet. The sign will be located within a 30 foot water and sewer easement and the consolidated utility district easement. Additional reasons for the request include the utility easements run the entire length of the front of the property and the right of way is approximately 38 feet from current edge of pavement on Las Casas Highway. The agreement for a sign in a city of Murfreesboro easement has been signed by the Murfreesboro Water and Sewer Department, the Director of Building and Codes, as well as the approval letter from CUD's project coordinator, Brian Bradley. Due to the sensitivity of placement of the sign in regards to water and sewer lines, this sign has been located on site by a Tennessee registered engineer and that form of the certificate of sign placement is in the BZA package. The applicant will comply with all other setbacks and regulations. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them for you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Harrison. Any questions for Mr. Harrison? All right. Thank you, sir. At this thank time, you. we'll conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against the application, if you would, please come forward. And seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for further discussions or motion. If there's no further discussion, I'll make a motion we approve the application. Uh, subject to any staff comments. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 The opposed? All right, uh, that application has been approved. All right, uh, as I indicated, the uh, application Z14002 by Ms. Sakita Duncan has been withdrawn. So we'll next uh, consider a special use permit request application Z14003 by Ms. Tricia Hopkins. She's requesting a special use permit in order to conduct a home occupation, uh, which would be a hair salon at her residence located at 819. South Baird Lane, and this property is located in a residential single-family RS-10 zone. Mr. Blomley, if you'd review that one for us, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chairman Rogers, and good afternoon, Chairman Rogers and members of the board. Our uh, first special use permit application today, as you mentioned, is located at 819 South Baird Lane, which is on the east side of South Baird, uh, just south of uh, Cheryl Boulevard. 
It's on the segment of Baird that is in between uh, Mercury and Bradyville. Property is zoned RS10. Uh, it came to our attention uh, this fall that uh, the owner of that property was operating a, uh, a home-based hair salon there, and we uh, notified the applicant that that, or we notified the owner that that required a special use permit from the Board of Zoning Appeals, and uh, she promptly made application to the board uh, in order to um, comply with the uh, city zoning requirements and obtain a special use permit. Uh, included with the agenda materials uh, is a site plan uh, comprised of, a, of a, an aerial photo as well as a uh, uh, write-up from Ms. Hopkins uh, addressing sections 8 and 9 of the zoning ordinance. And also included are letters from the neighbors at 814, 822, and 823 South Baird Lane in support of Ms. Hopkins' application. Uh, we could look at the aerial photo on the uh, uh, on the screen in front of us. You'll see Miss um, Hopkins' property, as I mentioned, located on the east side of South Baird Lane, where the word "site" is uh, written on the uh, on the aerial photo. You can see the uh, driveway is located on the south side of the lot. It's somewhat of a shared driveway with the neighbor to the south. Uh, the applicant seeks a special use permit, as I mentioned, to operate a home-based hair salon from a residence. Uh, she has pulled permits to convert uh, an existing room in the house into the salon, including uh, plumbing permits and building permits. Uh, she is still awaiting her final inspection, uh, but has pulled the necessary permits um, for, the, for the conversion of that room. Uh, she proposes that clients will visit her house by appointment only. Uh, days of operation will be Tuesday through Friday from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m., with the last client leaving no later than 6 p.m. And she has indicated that the maximum number of appointments that she will schedule per business day will be six, and that she will leave 15 to 30 minute gaps in between appointments in order to eliminate the overlap of appointments. Uh, in addition to those regular hours on Tuesday through Friday, she has also indicated that she will have an occasional appointment on Saturday mornings from 10 to 12. And uh, in addressing the various standards for home-based businesses, uh, the applicant has indicated that she will have uh, no outside employees. Uh, the home will take up approximately 12% of the structure in that room, which does not exceed the maximum 25% square footage that our zoning ordinance allows. Uh, access from the outside will be provided via a front door on the house where there was previously a, a window. She has taken out that window and put in a door uh, to provide access into the salon room. Uh, and as I mentioned, the work, the conversion of that room, uh, she's still awaiting her final inspection from the Board of Zoning Appeals, or excuse me, from the uh, building inspector. Now I'll show you the site plan. You'll, you'll see here, it's zoomed in a little bit more on her property. The driveway from the edge of pavement of Baird to the and to the back end of the driveway is approximately 90 feet deep and 15 feet wide. And um, Ms. Hopkins has indicated that she can uh, that she will uh, that approximately six vehicles can park in that garage, so there would be uh, ample room for the no more than one client at a time that she will be seeing uh, at her home. Uh, according to the State of Tennessee Cosmetology Board, all, cosmetolo all cosmetology shops, including ones located in a private residence, shall display a sign of sufficient size as to be clearly visible from the street, indicating that it is a shop. Uh, the zoning ordinance allows a max maximum three square foot attached sign subject to approval by the BZA. Uh, the applicant initially proposed a sign that would be attached but perpendicular to the house. However, she has revised her proposal and is requesting a sign that is attached but flush with the front of the house. Uh, a drawing of the proposed sign has been submitted by the applicant, and I'll show that to you. I've actually got it turned sideways. But um, uh, this sign, I believe, would be slightly over three square feet based upon the way uh, our sign ordinance requires signage to be measured. Uh, 
And as I mentioned in the staff comments, the dimensions of the sign may vary slightly from what is shown on this drawing. And regardless, the applicant is aware that the sign cannot exceed three square feet. But this is an, an, an approximate um, sketch of what the sign would look like. And it would be flush with her house. And as I mentioned in your agenda materials, uh, the applicant has provided letters from uh, the residents of 18, 814 South Baird Lane, that looks like uh, Ken and Claire Mobley. Uh, 822 South Baird Lane, uh, Mildred Banks. And 823 South Baird Lane, Ted Keel. Um, Mr. Keel's house, I believe, is the one that uh, the applicant shared a driveway with. And now some photographs of the property. This is the front of the house. You can see on the left side of the house uh, is the new door that was added. The entrance to the salon. That fixture that's on the, uh, that the arrow is pointing to was what her old sign was attached to um, before she was notified that she was going to have to come to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, upon notification that, that uh, she needed to come into compliance, she took down the sign. And um, so right now there's no sign hanging from the uh, front wall. And this is the driveway as viewed from the street. Matthew, or can, can I ask you a question? Can you go sure. back to the sign? Sure. But are you saying that the sign will no longer be hanging from that back bracket? It would be uh, abut abutting the brick wall. Is that correct? Correct. It would be, it would be flush with the with the house. Okay. And that's the driveway. As you can see, it's a shared driveway with the neighbor to the south. And this is the adjacent property to the south and the adjacent property to the north, and then several photos looking across Barrett Lane. Now, one thing I will point out is that uh, there is a, um, back in 1999, there was a um, special use permit granted by the Board of Zoning Appeals for a home-based hair salon three doors down. I believe it's at 907 South Baird. And uh, so this is the a picture of the home that was approved in 1999 for a home-based barber shop at 907 South Baird, and that's a photo of the sign for that um, for that home-based barber shop just down the street. Uh, with that being said, if the board approves this request, staff recommends the following conditions. Uh, the work done on the house must pass final inspection. Number two, all client visits are to be by appointment only. There shall be no overlapping appointments. There shall be a maximum of six appointments per business day, and all appointments shall end no later than 6 p.m. And that's just kind of, uh, kind of getting on the record what the applicant is already committed to. And number three, any signage approved for this home-based business by the Board of Zoning Appeals shall also conform to the city sign ordinance. And because we don't have the exact sign that she is going to use, that is just getting on the record that whatever sign she is approved for will need to comply with the requirements of the sign ordinance. Uh, with that being said, um, I'll be happy to answer any questions that the board may have before or after the public hearing. And Ms. Hopkins is in attendance as well if you have any questions for her. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bonley. Questions for Mr. Bonley? Matthew, how did, it, how did it come to the city's attention? Uh, we received a call from a neighbor. Okay. Do you know who? Uh, I believe it. Uh, was it, let me ask you this: Was it was it one of these neighbors that written, had written a letter? No, no. I believe it was the um, uh, person who was operating the uh, the one at nine oh seven. Because they, they had had to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals and uh, were wanting to make sure that the... Uh, uh, All's fair. Yes, okay. yes. They weren't necessarily against it. It was just uh, there's a process and each person needs to do it. That's, that's my understanding. Okay. All right. Any other questions? 
All right, Ms. Hopkins, anything you'd like to add to the application? Yeah, I'm sorry. You can come to the podium and uh, give us your name and your address. My name is Trisha Hopkins, 819 South Baird Lane. Um, I just want to thank you for your consideration, and um, I'm just trying to be able to raise a family at home and have a small business at home. Like I said in the um, application, I'm not um, going to have several clients. I won't have more than one at a time. It'll be by appointment only, definitely no walk-ins. And that's it. Any questions Thanks. for Ms. Hopkins? All right. Thank you, ma'am. At this time, we'll conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against the application, if you would please come forward. If you would, uh, state your name and your address for us, please. I'm Ted Kyle. I live at 823 South Baird, uh, the house next door. And uh, we more or less share a driveway. And uh, when she was operating, you know, she always, the clients always parked where I had access, you know, and uh, they've been good neighbors. You know, they've improved the property, you know, and uh, I feel like they've been an asset to the neighborhood. All right. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak for or against the application? All right, then at this time, I'll we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for further discussions or motion. Can I add to the list of, of recommendations? I think we I try to remember this on home occupations that we add that the, that the, um, Application will lapse uh, if the property is ever transferred. Uh, Certainly. Okay. I just. Yeah, that's that's something that, that we have done in the past. Okay. And the condition about the signage meeting the city signed ordinance is that's basically the three feet. Yeah, the three feet, and I believe it's if it's over two and a half feet, I believe a, a sign permit is required. But uh, what I would do is is just ask. Um, uh, Ms. Hopkins to work with our Building and Codes Department to make sure that the signage that she proposes, if approved by the Board of Zoning Appeals, uh, is compliant with our sign ordinance. Okay. If there's no further discussion, I'll make a motion that we approve subject to all uh, staff comments and Chairman Rogers' uh, comment about uh, it lapsing with the owner. Current owner. A second. All right, motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Ms. Hopkins, that application has been approved. All right, uh, we'll now consider application Z14004 by Mr. Mike Cullen. He's requesting a special use permit in order to conduct a home occupation at his residence uh, located at 1207 Azure Way. Uh, this property is located in a residential single-family RS-12 zone, and the home occupation consists of group instruction for people convicted of driving under the influence or reckless endangerment. All right, Mr. Blum, if you'd review that one for us, please. Thank you, Chairman Rogers. Um, and if you'll bear with me on this, uh, as you all are aware, there's a little bit of history on this. Um, Mr. Cullen came before the Board of Zoning Appeals back in July for the same request and was denied. And then at last month's meeting, you'll recall that that um, uh, the board voted to waive or to grant his request for a waiver of the 18-month waiting period before an application that is denied can come back before the Board of Zoning Appeals for consideration. So first, what I'll do is just give you some um, some background once again on the application, and then um, some of the additional information that uh, Mr. Cohen has included. Um, to address some of the concerns of, um, that were uh, raised in July. First of all, we have the aerial photograph in front of us. Um, property is located at uh, 1207 Azure Way, zoned RS-12. It is along the south side of Azure Way, which is in the Evergreen Farm subdivision, uh, two houses away from the intersection with Cason Lane. Uh, the applicant teaches a class called Prime for Life, which is um, uh, 
for uh, just group instruction for people who have been convicted of driving under the influence or uh, reckless endanger endangerment. Uh, for uh, several years, he did this out of his home, and uh, when he contacted staff about getting a business license, uh, staff indicated to him that uh, this would require a special use permit from the Board of Zoning Appeals, which is when he made his application in July. And uh, some detail, additional details with regards to the application. Uh, the applicant is requesting to be able to hold uh, one class per uh, one class every three weeks, and the classes would always be on Saturdays and would be held from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. And uh, one of the main differences in this application versus the one from July is that uh, he is requesting the ability to have a maximum of six students per class period as opposed to uh, nine students, which is what he requested in July. Uh, the applicant indicated in his letter that this will, um, during a six-month period, will yield a total of 36 students. Uh, however, with uh, one class held every three weeks, uh, staff calculates that this would yield a maximum total of 48 to 54 students every, 60, every six months. Uh, as I mentioned, the class is for people convicted of misdemeanor driving under the influence or reckless endangerment. Uh, the applicant has submitted some statistics uh, from over the uh, uh, last six months and 18 months. Over the last 18 months, um, he had a total of 105 students in his classes, uh, which would be 5.8 per month. And he says of the 105, uh, nine were arrested while on prescription medication while the remainder were alcohol related. And according to the material submitted by the applicant this month, he had a total of 52 students during the course of the last six months, an average of 6.5 per month. Of the 52, seven were arrested for driving on prescription medication while the remainder were alcohol related. According to the, uh, in addressing some of the other standards in our zoning ordinance, according to the property assessor's website, the house is uh, 2,428 square feet. The applicant proposes to use roughly 12 percent, which does not exceed the maximum 25 percent. Uh, he will have no employees and he is not requesting any signage for his home based business. One of the main concerns uh, that, was, that was stated in the uh, July meeting was with regards to traffic management for this home-based business. Uh, the applicant's driveway, and I'll show you the aerial photo, is approximately 16 to 17 feet wide and 45 feet deep from, from the curb, which will accommodate a total of four vehicles. Uh, Mr. Cullen is in the process of um, getting his garage to where he can put his personal vehicle in the garage and will uh, park his or will will um, remove the other two vehicles of his the other two personal vehicles from the driveway, leaving uh, four parking spaces available for his students uh, at class times. He has indicated that uh, when the six students will sign up, the first four will be given um, the ability to park in his driveway. If there are that many that, that drive, he said that uh, a number of the students actually are dropped off. So all additional students over the four will be required to be dropped off, and drop-offs and pickups will likely occur in the street if the driveway is full. On-street parking along this segment of Azure Way is currently permitted subject to certain restrictions in the city code. Staff has reviewed the city's aerial photography, which reveals that a minimal, a minimal amount of on-street parking has historic, historically occurred on uh, this block of, uh, of Azure Way. The planning staff has consulted with the city's traffic engineer regarding the impact of the proposed home-based business on the public street. He has indicated that the 140-foot separation of Mr. Cullen's property from the intersection of Azure Way and Cason Lane is of sufficient distance and the home-based business will have minimal impact on the intersection of Azure and Cason. In July, the board also wanted details about the width of the street. Azure Way is classified as a residential subcollector in the city's major thoroughfare plan. 
residential subcollectors have a 24 foot wide pavement width, including 12 foot, two 12 foot wide travel lanes according to the city's standard street specifications. Azure Way predates the current standard street specifications. The applicant references a street width of 36 feet in his letter to the board, but this measurement is from face of curb to face of curb, including the gutters. The actual pavement width is 33 to 34 feet. As a frame of reference, 33 feet is the same pavement width required for a three-lane cross-section, which includes three 11-foot travel lanes. So it's uh, Azure, Azure Way's pavement width is actually nine foot greater than a standard residential subcollector street. Because of its sizable pavement width, the city's traffic engineer has indicated that Azure Way would be able to handle on-street parking and that on-street parking here should not negatively impact Azure Way or its intersection with Cason Lane. Uh, Mr. Cullen, just as a frame of reference, I did not include this in your agenda materials. He included the restrictive covenants for Evergreen Farms, Section 3. He indicates in his letter to the BZA that the covenants do not prohibit home-based businesses. Staff has reviewed the covenants and cannot find any pr provisions that would expressly prohibit Mr. Cullen's home-based business. And while the board, uh, while that's, while I'm providing that information to the board, that's more for information only. Uh, in addition, Mr. Cullen has submitted letters from his neighbors at 1203, 1204, 1208, and 1211 Azure Way. Uh, the board should note that the letter from the resident of 1204 Azure Way is not signed. And to um, kind of give you a, um, to kind of orient you to where these houses are, um, 1203 is his next door neighbor on the corner of Kaysen and Azure. 1211 is his next door neighbor on the other side, and 1204 and 1208 are the houses directly across Azure Way from the applicants. In the letter, and this was the same letter that um, he provided to the board last month, he asks uh, his neighbors, were they aware that he holds a class in his home every three weeks, or that he did before July? Since July, he's been holding the classes um, in hotels, I believe. And then he asks them if it inconveniences them if he holds the classes in his home every three weeks. So those letters have been included um, by the applicant. If the board wishes to approve this request, staff recommends the following conditions. Uh, number one, there shall be no more than one class held at the residence every three weeks. Each class shall have no more than six students in attendance. And number two, the driveway shall be free of personal vehicles on days when classes are held so that it can accommodate four student vehicles. Uh, and I have some photographs to show you as well. And also included were the minutes from both the July and December meetings for your reference. There's the front of 1207 Azure Way. Uh, Mr. Cullen's personal vehicle is on the right in that photograph. That is the vehicle that he has indicated that he will move inside of the garage. The vehicle on the left, he is proposing to sell or in any event remove from the property. This is the driveway of 1207 Azure Way. You can see it's, uh, the, the, it's deep enough to handle um, four vehicles. This is the adjacent property to the west. This is looking west down Azure Way. This is the adjacent property to the east on the corner of Kaysen and Azure. Looking east down Azure Way towards that intersection. And this is looking across the street from the subject property. And then once again across the street. With that being said, I'll be happy to answer any questions. And Mr. Cullen is in attendance as well if you have any questions for him. All right. Thank you, Mr. Blomley. Questions for Mr. Blomley? All right. Mr. Cullen, anything you'd like to add to the application? Uh, I have that map I brought last time. I don't know if you need to see it. Uh, Matthew covered it pretty much about uh, the road size and all that. <clears throat> But I want to thank you again for uh, giving me a second chance to um, address the concerns that the board had last time, which was 
according to the attorney, that the parking was an issue and the effect it would have on the neighborhood. Um, and with the surveys I did around me, they, they, they all signed it saying they didn't have a problem except for the one man he checked. He wouldn't sign it. He's real old, and I think he just had a problem putting his name down, but he, he said it was okay to him. Um, the first issue was the parking, and Matthew mentioned that I'm going to clear the driveway out and have enough room for four vehicles, and that I'm going to reduce the uh occupancy of the, the, the minimum of six students instead of nine and that way if I have four people driving they can park in the driveway and if and when they call and tell me they're coming or not and I can ask them are you driving or are you your license still suspended and these are all misdemeanors there's no they're typically first time uh, DUI or reckless endangerment and um, it's a misdemeanor just a little bit more serious than a traffic ticket but it, it's these are not you know hardened criminals um, and any of the other two if the driveway fills up with this four people the other two people that want to come to the class will either have to uh, be dropped off or scheduled for a different time the following, you know, the next, you know, three weeks from them. The second uh, problem when I was here in July was the effect of the neighborhood. And um, here again, I, I, I've talked to them and they were virtually unaware that I was doing this. And uh, it's been at least three years that I've been holding classes. Uh, I also told them it was every three weeks that I'd, I'd be doing this if, if approved and continue to be doing it in the future. The biggest problem that we have in that area where I live and everybody else is the fire station's about a thousand feet from us, station number nine. And they, and they get called out 10 to 20 times a day and they're zooming up and down the highway with their sirens on which involves also the police doing the same thing in ambulances and then so we have a lot of noise and disturbance just from the fire department it's a necessary evil you can't change it but that's the disturbance in the neighborhood um, Evergreen Farms has uh, 1,300 homes in it right now, and when it's sold out, it will have about 2,000. And I know, I've lived there for 11 years, I know there's a lot of home-based businesses that aren't uh, recorded and have their license, but I do know there's several website designers that I've talked to about doing a website for me uh, medical uh, secretaries, insurance salespeople, and um, daycare facilities with four children or less so they don't have to go by the state guidelines and be registered and stuff. So there's a lot of activity that go on in these 1,300 homes and uh, you know, I don't think what I do disturbs anybody compared to some of the stuff that may go on. There's also, I looked up, three sex offenders that live within a half a mile of my house that have registered as they're supposed to do. And there's several felons that live close to me within a mile or two miles that uh, I'm aware of. There's a large church, if you need to see it, it's on one of Matt's pictures that 
is right behind me. Our board, our boundaries meet. And down the road, uh, just a half a block or two, there's another church, all linked Evergreen Farms. And then across from the fire station, there's a third church. And every one of these churches, as all churches, they offer uh, classes for their parishioners. I think that's a Catholic term because I'm Catholic, but uh, maybe maybe not. Um, that people that have alcohol and drug problems. I know the church I go to, which is um, uh, gosh, I forgot it. Uh, World Outreach Church. They have a you know, numerous classes for people with with different problems. And so, you know, all this is going around us, around me, and it's just not me doing this. Um, and as Matt said, I've enclosed the restrictions to the neighborhood, and they don't have anything against home-based businesses. The only signs that can be put up are for real estate agents to put their signs up. And the survey thing the state makes me do every quarter, I've got to send in a report on how many males and females come to the class or age, if they're there before drug or alcohol, and their ages. And about 12% of them are for, for out for drugs. And that's typically all of them are there for pre prescription drugs, painkillers that... Uh, a lot of people are taking these days. It's if you've ever just recently on the news, they say more people die from prescription medicine than people that abuse street drugs such as crack and cocaine. But there's more deaths from prescription medicine. I have a very good record. Uh, all my students. Um, so far, I have not been rearrested, and I play a little trick on them, and I'm going to show you all because, and some of you may know this, it's been on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and Jeopardy, which is one of my favorite shows, and nobody ever got it right. And if you know the answer, if you've heard this before, I know Matthew's been, I teach the class and say I hypnotize you, so I hypnotize you. Matthew already, and uh, he claims it works. It works for most people, but not everybody. Hey, Mr. Conn, I don't want to cut you off, but we, we may be drifting a little far afield here for what we need to talk about. Uh, okay. If you can kind of stay on track. All right. Get, well, get through this. that's about it. I just want to thank you for your uh, opportunity to um, to tell you again and to show you that from the last meeting in July, these two concerns are really uh, not a con really a minute concern to turn me down. And I thank you again. All right. Thank you, Mr. Collin. Any questions for Mr. Collin? All right. Thank you, sir. At, uh, at this time, we'll conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against the application, if you would please come forward. And seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed. Open the floor for further discussions or motion. If there's no further discussion, I move to approve the application subject to staff comments as well as the um, additional uh, restriction that Chairman Rogers placed on the last application that this would only be for this uh, property owner and not any addition, not any future property owner. We have a second. Going once. Going twice. I will. I will second that motion. Um, 
to put it up for a vote, I think. I, the only comment that I have is, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking through here and um, the objects of granting a um, special use permit, and I think that, you know, Mr. Cullen has taken on the uh, objections that we noted last time with respects to the, the parking situation and then also um, the, I mean, he's made his point with respects to the adverse or if there's any uh, adverse findings with respects to uh, the neighborhood and the fact that he's got four of his neighbors or three out of the four that we know for sure and four, possibly four of his neighbors that uh, don't have issue with it. My basis uh, on voting some, on something like this, though, is would I want this in my neighborhood? Um, I don't know that I have a problem with the hair salon, but uh, uh, you know, do I have an issue with um, folks that are coming in for? And I don't know that it's a it's not a rehab center. Uh, I think it's just a uh, educational. Uh, process. They're definitely not staying there, but it's just the uh, what type of service that is being provided. Um, but I don't know uh, if, if in this case, it, you know, just because I wouldn't necessarily want this next to me, uh, if based upon what we the rules that we have before us is enough to deny this application. Is that a question? It is. <laughs> so, sorry about that. I guess that's what you get paid for. So, <laughs> I guess to some extent uh, all we can do is uh, operate through our own personalities and our own uh, values and our own eyes. And yet uh, I do believe we're required to step back from that to the extent that that's humanly possible. Uh, and uh, you know, unrelated to this application, there are a lot of things that I personally don't like. But whether I could say that they would uh, have a substantial or undue adverse effect on the adjacent property or the character of the neighborhood, uh, traffic conditions, parking, utility facilities, those are two separate questions. Right. And uh, yeah, like I said, we to some extent all we can do is look through our own eyes, and yet we are required in this to step back to the extent we can and say, you know, maybe that's not what I would be my first choice for a neighbor, uh, but would it really uh, damage the neighborhood or damage the, the, the area? And again, I believe those are two separate questions. And I, I would agree with your assessment. I will say that um, since the first application, when um, Mr. Cullen um, requested to have nine students, I was quite concerned with, and him having two cars in his driveway, I was quite concerned with nine students, even if they were all dropped off and picked up. Um, the people who brought them there may have to wait for a period of time, which could cause up to seven cars being on the road. And despite the fact that the road, as Mr. Blomley pointed out, is is wide enough to allow for on on road parking. Nine, seven, seven cars on that road is is quite substantial in that area, um, in my mind. But I think that Mr. Cullen has addressed those concerns in his new application, um, and is willing to work with us to reduce that um, burden, or potential burden on his community. I'll, I'll say that I, yeah, it looks like he's tightened it up pretty good uh, on this. That wh the way I understand it is we're um, voting on an application that requests having four cars on the property once every three weeks. Correct. 
that that's that's correct um, everything's going to take place inside the house not any employees so we're gonna have I mean that, that's that's really the all the cars can the cars park on the street is that I can't know. what he's committing to is is beyond that for if, if he has four cars that uh, or four students who are going to drive. The first four will be allowed to park in the street, um, in, the or, excuse me, in the driveway, and then the fifth and sixth will have to be dropped off. He said if, if the, the fifth and sixth ones right. will not be allowed to park there for the entire duration of the class. The staff has not recommended that there be no on-street parking, though, have you? That's correct. Okay. There is. I'm sorry, did you say there is on-street parking? Uh, yeah, yeah. But so we, we there there can be vehicles parked on the street, but uh, the proposal is that those vehicles are going to be in the driveway. Yeah, the 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 extended parking will be in the driveway. Now, if the driveway is full, the student, the fifth and sixth students who will be dropped off would have to be dropped off on the street. Uh, on the street, sure. But I think that would be the. I think what he's representing is that that would be the extent of it. Okay. Okay. Very seldom would have uh, what they're saying is that the employer is six, sixty, seventy percent drive. Most of the time, it's you know, it's two or three to drive. I say I had a tough time with this on the last go around. Uh, like I said, Mr. Collins made an attempt to to rectify our concerns. Um, you know, you mentioned there were some churches that have had these sort of meetings. I guess just in personal opinion, I guess you have to apply this with it. seems like a better place to have it. So I'm, I'm probably going to vote no, but I understand there's there's difference of opinion on these. So that's that's where I stand. The church is done off of this place. That would be approved through the state license. Excuse me, if you if you have something else to address, would you please come up to the microphone so it'll get on the record? Hey, we, yeah, I think we're good. All right, we're ready to vote. All right, um, so we have a motion and a second. Okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. All right. Um, I think the application, I uh, know the application has passed to Mr. Cullen, so you have your special use permit uh, with the conditions uh, as set forth by staff in addition to the fact that the permit will lapse upon your transfer of the property. All right. And Ms. Davis, did you get uh, everybody's vote? Okay. Thank you. All right, uh, we will now move on to our final application. It is Z14005 by Mr. Joe Swanson, Jr. of Swanson Developments. This is for Victory Christian Center of Murfreesboro and Dr. Michael Hine for Redeemer Classical Academy. They are requesting a special use permit in order to expand an existing uh, private school in a residential single-family RS-10 zone. And this is for property located at 1503 Sulphur Springs Road. Uh, the applicants are requesting approval to locate one additional portable classroom building on the subject property for the 2014-2015 school year. All right, Mr. Blumley, if you review that in force, please. Thank you, Chairman Rogers. We have, we have another return applicant today. This is a day of boomerangs. <laughs> uh, the application, as you mentioned, is for a special use permit in order to expand an existing institutional group assembly use of private school. Uh, the applicants are requesting approval to locate one additional portable classroom building on the subject property for the 2014-2015 school year. Just to give you a brief rundown of the location of the subject property, it's at the northwest corner of the intersection of Sulphur Springs Road and Myers Drive, as you can see on the aerial photograph before you. Uh, this is the location of the former Family Worship Center. Um, Victory Christian Church owns the property now, and they are currently leasing the property to uh, Redeemer Classical Academy. Redeemer Classical uh, has been in the property uh, since August, I believe, after the board approved its special use permit back in July. Uh, they. The, the portion of the property that they use primarily are the three portable classroom buildings, uh, and they use a small portion of the existing 
um, permanent building on site. As you know and you're very familiar with, those three portable buildings uh, were in violation until the board um, granted the, the two years for the Redeemer Classical Academy. Those were um, placed on the property around 98 or 99 and um, are a number of years or were a number of years in violation of its um, special of their special use permit. Uh, the applicants have uh, come to the planning staff and have indicated that, uh, and if you'll recall back in July, they did not know what the future held for them after the two years at this location. And they have since indicated that um, they will likely be looking for a uh, another piece of property to uh, to locate after next school year, after the 2014-2015 school year. Uh, but as such, they um, need adequate facilities in order to um, in order to address their needs for uh, the upcoming school year. And so they are requesting approval to allow a fourth portable classroom on the subject property for the 2014-2015 school year. And they're um, voluntarily um, stating that this portable classroom will be removed by the same date that was um, uh, mandated by the Board of Zoning Appeals at its July meeting for the other three portable classrooms which I believe is July 31st, 2015. Uh, I believe Redeemer will, will be either purchasing or leasing this portable classroom. So when they move to a new location beginning with the 2015-2016 school year, they will want to take this with them to use it at their new location. Now to show you the proposed location of the portable classroom building, so here, um, it would be just to the west of the existing three portable classrooms. And it would be in between the existing portable buildings and the parking lot. And they have indicated that it will be the same size as the existing portable classroom buildings, which I believe is 24 by 62. And they are aware of the board's condition from July that the maximum number of students to be enrolled at this school is 65. And they, at this time, do not anticipate um, enrolling any more than 65 for the, um, for the coming school year. But this fourth portable classroom building will allow them to um, accommodate that maximum number should they, should they get that, uh, should they have between 60 and 65. I believe currently this year they have enrolled 40, 48, I believe. And uh, so this would allow them to grow to that maximum number if need be. Uh, the actual operation of the school will be identical to what was presented to the board back in July. Uh, this would just allow them a little bit of additional capacity. So no uh, real operational changes are proposed with this. As I mentioned, the applicants are looking to uh, uh, remove this by July 31st, 2015. If the board approves this request, staff recommends the following conditions, which are the same as the conditions of approval from the original special use permit in July. I thought it would be a good idea to, um, to kind of re-codify, if you will, the, um, the conditions that were placed on the other special use permit. All portable classroom buildings must be removed from the property no later than July 31st, 2015. The maximum number of students allowed to be enrolled at the school is 65. If the school desires to have a greater number of students, then it must apply to the BZA to amend the special use permit. A traffic study will be required at that time. And number three, no staging or queuing of school traffic will be allowed on either Myers Drive or Sulphur Springs Road. And uh, to staff's knowledge, there have been no, um, uh, or no, no traffic related issues have been brought to our attention since the school began operating. That's not to say that there might not be any out there, but um, none have been brought to our attention. And um, Mr. Howard with Redeemer has indicated that they are, have successfully been able to stage all of their drop-off and pick-up traffic on the property without uh, it spilling over into the public street. And I have some additional photographs to show you. It's the existing portables as viewed from Sulphur Springs Road looking across Sulphur Springs from the subject property. 
The location of the proposed portable was approximately where the uh, typing is on the uh, on that photograph. And once again, likewise with this photograph. The school parking lot is viewed from the portables. Looking west from the portables, you can see there's a tree line to the west and a tree line to the north as well. And the applicant proposes to continue to use the existing tree lines to the north and to the west to screen the uh, portables. And they have uh, chosen the location in between the portables and the parking lot on purpose to, uh, so that the additional portable would be removed from the public street, removed from view of Sulphur Springs Road. With that being said, I'll be happy to answer any questions. And Mr. Howard is in attendance, um, sitting in for Dr. Hein, and Mr. Joe Swanson, Jr., representing uh, Victory Christian Center, is in attendance representing the owner of the property. It is a joint application, as it was back in July. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bonley. Any questions for Mr. Bonley? All right. Uh, Mr. Howard or Mr. Swanson, anything you all would like to add? No? Okay. He's looking at you and you're looking at him. You <laughs> 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 sit there this long, you got to say something right, Jeff. <laughs> Chairman Rogers, board, staff, thank you for this opportunity. Um, as agent for my brother at Victory Christian Center, there, I just want to, for the record, there's no financial increase on our behalf. This is to help the school get on their feet, um, Christian School, and we look forward to hopefully working with them on the purchase of a parcel and possibly building uh, at the end of the term. Okay, any questions for me? Mr. Swanson, does the actual lease end in July of 2015? Yes. Okay. Yes, and uh, as a caveat, Bethel Church, uh -huh. pretty big church, they are co-occupants with Redeemer at this point in time. And they have an option to purchase the church over a period of time. Bethel does. And, and so realistically, since they're not going to retrofit the existing building, the decision has been made that they would definitely look for a different spot. Um, I mean, are the is it already in work? I, here's the hesitancy, okay? So is it already in the works that uh, this spot and building will be ready for them to occupy uh, by uh, the school year of the fall of 2015 to 16? You follow what I'm trying to say? Or are they going to be, be, be in a pinch uh, because they don't have a, a facility for sure to move into by July 31st, 2015. Okay. I can't answer that specifically, but let me give you okay. from my side of the fence, so right. to speak. Um, Redeemer Classical has a right of first refusal, okay? In my, and we have not formally executed a document that they've refused that right of first refusal. Okay. That's, a, that's a process that we're going through. Their board has indicated to me, or members of their board have indicated to me, that they are pursuing uh, a site, site selection. Now, Mr. Howard would need to speak uh, further to that as to what, what they have found or where they're looking. I'm not sure if it's city, county. They know that I'd like to be in the mix. But beyond that, I can't answer that specifically. Um, the, the, the plan at this point is that once Bethel gives me their interest that they do want to buy, that would generate a document asking Redeemer to, are they going to exercise a right of first refusal? And at that point, they would move forward. Mr. Howard, do you have any anything further on the site acquisition, possibly? Good afternoon, Chairman Rogers, board. Uh, so to, to answer the question, we have uh, a location committee that has been selected from uh, amongst the the, the parents, uh, staff members of, of uh, Redeemer Classical Academy. Um, they have gone through a rigorous uh, location search, and what they have returned is they have returned three sites that are um, one of which is the correct three of which are the correct size, one of which is the correct zoning for a, um, a public or private school. 
and uh, all three we are uh, we are hoping are within our price range uh, or within our, our uh, ability to, to purchase. And so we're, we're still working through that right now. That's still something that's in process currently. But uh, we expect that uh, we, we've, we've went through time frames with, um, with zoning as far as rezoning, what it would take to rezone two of the sites. And we're still in good shape on, on that, being able to get everything rezoned, then purchased, and then ready for occupancy by that August of 2015 for the 2015-16 school year. What our plan would probably be along those lines is, because we know that it would uh, more than likely for a couple of different reasons, one for um, financial reasons is that we will have to look at, at land that's a little bit further out uh, from the city. just for our affordability, and two, also because of the way in which this more than likely will have to happen, is that what we're looking at is we're probably going to see if we can remove the portables from the site at 1503 Sulphur Springs, remove those to the new site, which are more, more than likely going to be in the county rather than the city. And that's just, again, for affordability reasons. So we want to try to have enough land that we can um, be able to place the portables, but then later on build a more permanent structure, and then later on the potential for additional parking, additional um, outside recreation areas, ball fields, things of that nature. So we, we've We've got a plan and a process in place right now. We're not fully to the end of it yet, but to answer your question, we do think that we have something that is being worked on currently that would allow us to remove the portables at the end of July, place them on, on a new property so that we can continue the school into the 2015-16 school year. But it won't, it won't be on Sulphur Springs, uh, 1503 Sulphur Springs. And that, that was solidified with the fact that uh, we knew when we were signing the lease for uh, 1503 Sulphur Springs with Mr. Swanson, we knew that we couldn't take down the existing church facility, the existing building. Uh, one, again, monetary reasons. Two, uh, educational occupancy codes would not allow us to have students within that building uh, just because of e ingress, egress, um, hallway widths, things of that nature. So now, since then, since our, our last application to the board, what's changed is that, as um, Mr. Swanson alluded to, is that we, um, uh, we are now a co-tenant along with Bethel Community Church. It's been a fantastic arrangement. Uh, it's, it's working out very well. And so uh, we hope to continue that, that tenancy along with them. And then as they grow, we kind of come away, you know, pull away from that site and go to another site. So right now it's, there's a lot of synergies between the two. And let me... Couple reasons for my questions. It, uh, one is, I did want to hear the plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Two is the way I look at this. It, it, if the board agreed to to add another uh, portable, it's like giving it's like giving a kid a little more rope. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what I don't want to happen is we're coming in March of 2015. Mm -hmm. And the, these plans did not come to fruition and saying, hey, um, then it's, it's the BZA becomes the bad guy because we're, I, I kind of doubt, mm -hmm. and again, I can't speak for the whole board, but I kind of doubt very seriously that's going to get extended at all. That, that's like the line that's been drawn in the sand. Right. And so we don't want to give somebody enough rope to hang themselves. Or I don't want to give somebody enough rope to hang themselves. And, so. and we have no false expectations that there will be any, any extension past July 31st of 2015. We see it as a line in the sand. We see it as, as a little bit, I guess, more concrete than that, is that we're not, there's not been any discussion on our part as far as, well, there's a backup plan or plan B that we'll just go back to the Board of, uh, you know, board of Zoning application. We're, we're, we're not... Uh, uh, we're not looking at anything along those lines. Uh, what, what we're hoping for 
is that, um, uh, again, that's the reason why we want to either lease or purchase this modular is because we want it to be ours. The second thing that the board has approved is that, um, and, and I just haven't got around to it yet, is that uh, I've, I've talked to Mr. Swanson about it, you know, just personally, is that what we'd like to also do is see if we can't get a, um, a letter of um, first refusal with Mr. Swanson to purchase those portables so that we could take those with us as well. So again, our, our, our driving uh, force in, in, in the matter right now is to find a new location and be able to relocate. So we're, we're not spending any energy or, or, or um, uh, uh, any time on trying to figure out, well, when do we need to put in the next application to the, to the BZA? Um, what, and to what Mr. Blomley said earlier is that the, another thing is that we don't see that we're going to exceed that 65, per, 65 student cap at this point. What we're just trying to do is give our kindergarten class of next year a little bit more room. And you've never used the inside of the building there. You've we, always just used the portables. We do. We use the inside of the building. We were um, we were approved by the state fire marshal to be able to use the um, the sanctuary hall for chapel. We use it for about an hour on Wednesday mornings, and then we have some offices inside the the um, uh, inside the main building. We can we can have we can have. Teachers go in and, and do their Xeroxing and, and do their um, uh, planning sessions and things like that in there. We can have um, student or we can have parent volunteers go in and put together things for the teachers and help them out. But we just can't have students go in there just because it's not it's not ready for ed educational occupancy. The cl so the classrooms and the students are primarily in the portables. They are all in the portables. Yes, and they. Yes, the occupancy next year would not fit in the three that you have no. now. No. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Howard. Thank you. And Mr. Swanson, Bethel knows that this that these portables are gone after July of 2015. Bethel right? is aware of all the BZA meetings and everything that has transpired. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> they certainly are. All right. I knew you. I knew Mr. Howard was, and I knew you were. I just want to make sure the other, the other yep. folks were. Okay. And, and and I will say too. I told you all last time you were here. I go by there every day on my way to work, and and, and candidly, I, I've not noticed any traffic around there. In fact, I was kind of concerned. I thought you all may not have ended up occupying the property. <laughs> Again, that's through communication to our parents. Is is that we we made sure and under, made sure that they understood that uh, that was one of the very one of the largest concerns uh, from the BZA when you granted the special use permit last time is that we could not have anybody with their with their cars out on the street. So basically, what we did is is the the traffic plan that we uh, submitted we've adhered to is that. The pickup and drop off is from the front door. It, it, the, the line winds back around the parking lot and then back out. We've never had a problem where we've even got close to the road at this point. Yeah. And, we, and we could do further um, Disney, you know, Walt Disney World switchbacks if we had to, <laughs> uh, to, to get more. We've never, we, we should never, ever have a problem with parking on, on that location. Okay. Will you be giving fast passes? <laughs> I'm sure there's some parents that would like that, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, fellas. Thank you. Um, at, have we done a public hearing? I don't believe we have. At this time, we'll go ahead and conduct a public hearing. You know what, President, wishing to speak for or against the application, if you would, please come forward. All right. And seeing no one, declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for further discussions or motion. If no further discussions, uh, I would like to make a motion to approve the application along with the recommendations set by the staff. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. That application has been approved. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. Uh, we'll move on now to staff reports and any other business. None. Nothing here. Nothing there. All right. 
No other business, and we're adjourned.